Viewers, implementing Rahul Gandhi's welfare guarantees, five to be precise, has cost the state government of Karnataka 52,000 crores. Process that number, 52,000 crores, viewers. The six guarantees he promised to the people of Talangana before the election, before the assembly election, has cost the Congress-run Ravant Reddy State Government 53,196 crores. Between two states, viewers, 1 lakh crores, not an insignificant number. Some of the central government's biggest schemes are about worth that much. Both states are creaking under the burden. The third state, Himachal, where Congress is also in power, is teetering on the verge of economic ruin brought on by a crushing debt crisis. For the first time in its history, the state government couldn't pay pensions or salaries of its own employees on time. Five days have passed. We are being told that tomorrow the payment will be made. At least the salaries will be paid out. And on the 10th, yes, on the 10th viewers, Pensions will be paid out. There's panic among the state government employees and pensioners who don't know how they will pay back their loans. The Union of Secretariat Employees is begging banks to not take punitive action for missing EMI deadlines. It's a massive embarrassment for the Congress party. Himachal has an estimated debt of 87,788 crores, friends. And that is expected to balloon to almost 1 lakh crore by next year. Because of this burden, these salaries have not been paid out. The pensions haven't been paid out. The chief minister, ministers are to forego their salaries for two months. The Chief Minister has also urged all MLAs in the state to relinquish their salaries. Two lakh salaries to two lakh government employees are delayed, held up. Nearly 1.5 lakh pensioners await their pension. These are the large numbers. The BJP has been unsparing in its criticism of the Congress party. Economic experts have also weighed in saying that the Congress party's 10 guarantees are primarily responsible for the state's mounting burden of debt. The Congress promised free electricity, a revert to the fiscally unsustainable old pension scheme, income support, including a payout of Rs. 1500 per month to women in the state. Just do the additions, viewers. Do the maths. The so-called freebies were avoidable given that the state's finances were not in a good shape to begin with. But viewers, when politicians, and I'm not trying to only single out the Congress here, viewers, so don't get me wrong. Whether it's the AAP or the BJP, they've also made their own promises at different times. But the reliance on this guarantee model has become pretty much the Congress's go-to card exclusive to the Congress, so to speak, viewers. And while it pays rich dividends electorally, it does ruin financially. The crisis in the state of Himachal has expectedly triggered a massive war of words. Sukhvinder Suku has come out and said that the freebies by former BJP government impacted the economy. To this, Jairam Thakur, the former chief minister, the BJP chief minister says, stop blaming others for financial crisis, take some responsibility. The Congress CM says BJP government looted the public's treasury. Jairam Thakur, the former CM, as I told you, says Congress raised loans worth rupees 24,000 crores. That's the fundamental problem. Sukhvinder so Suku says BJP government gave free electricity and water. Jairam Thakur says the khatakhat model of Congress is ending. It has brought the state to this juncture. They should have been a lot more pragmatic.
It's not just salaries and pensions, but the Congress that swears to serve women, STs and SCs, tribals and Dalits, Kisan, has cut allocations to critical welfare programs. This proves that freebie culture in the long term impacts the most vulnerable the most. Friends, here is some statistical hard facts for you. Health and family welfare budgetary allocation down by 3% over the last year. The schemes under this head are aimed at women and children. Another hard fact, social welfare nutrition budgetary allocation cut by a whopping 15% friends. Schemes under this head are designed for STs and SCs and other backward classes. Another hard fact, agriculture and allied activities spend down by a significant 9%. Who loses out is self-explanatory. Urban development allocation in budget cut by a massive 32%. Quality of life of the Ahmadmi will undoubtedly suffer. A large number of them live in big towns, in urban centers. Introducing the OPS among other Rahul Gandhi guarantees meant that the state's debt has accumulated to around 86,589 crores as I just showed you. Here are the hard facts that prove that the situation has deteriorated most after the Congress began ruling the state a couple of years ago. Overall debt in absolute terms for Himachal Pradesh since Sukhu took over has jumped 25.98%, almost 26%. Whereas the cumulative debt since 2020-21 has been 58.33% viewers. So half that debt has come in just the last one and a half years. The per capita debt in Himachal stands at Rs 1.17 lakh per person, making it one of the highest among states in the country. The Congress Suku government says that the centre hasn't provided loan support. Here are some hard facts that show otherwise. Suku government got Rs 8,215.7 crores from the centre in 2024, whereas the BJP's own Jairam Thakur government got only rupees 1,000 crores in 2020. The NDA looked after Suku more than it looked after its own Chief Minister Jairam Thakur. Perhaps that's why he ended up losing. But viewers, jokes aside, this is a very serious debate because if this model is going to be the go-to model, not just to win elections but also to implement because after all, even the Supreme Court has come out and said that you cannot make empty promises. And I'll get that quote out for all of us viewers in just a few moments. But let's get the debate started because it's an important subject. Let me first begin with Tehseen Punawala. P.K. Basu, senior economist, Anand Ranganathan also there with us. And of course, Guru Prakash Paswan. But I want to first frame this argument by getting in the supporters for the Congress party. Tehseen Punawala, look, I've shown some statistics. You can't throw them out of the window. At best, you can say, look, the state was already in the dumps when we got it, so what do you expect yeah. us to do? You could have been a lot more. To that, some people have said, you could have been a lot more careful, pragmatic with your expenditure. You could have tightened the purse strings. You could have actually yeah. turned things around. But uh, the Congress chose to, sorry to say this, Throw these freebies, raveries, call them what to, call them what you want to, to sort of buy their votes, quote unquote. That's what a lot of people are saying. Do you think this should have been done? And do you think this model applied across Karnataka where they felt the pinch, as you know, and Telangana where they will soon feel the pinch, if not already, is ruinous? Is this the economic model that we are going to expect from the Congress if and when they win the election at the centre, Mr. Tehseen Punawala? At any given parameter, you compare the Congress government with the BJP government, Vajpayee with Manmohan Singh Ji, Manmohan Singh Ji with Modi Ji, and you will see that the Congress government has been much better economically than any of these BJP governments who don't know. You know what was uh, Vajpayee Ji's average growth, you know what was Modi Ji's. Now, let's come to the states. You Obviously, the debt is about 86,000 crores at the moment, heading towards 95,000 crores at Himachal. They inherited a debt of 75,000 crores. Nobody talks about that. Why? Where is the 13,000 crore rupees due from the centre from June 2022? I'm sorry, you've got your figures a little wrong, but 
I'll let that pass. Finish your argument. Yes. No, no, no. Just seventy-three thousand crores. The chief minister has been on record. These, no, no, this, uh, this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Of course. Right. The, the chief minister has been on record. Seventy-three thousand right. crores was the debt inherited by right. the Congress. Right. It is eighty-five thousand crores. Thirteen thousand crores is due from the centre. The centres refused to give the disaster money, which is the right of the state to get. It suffered a terrible disaster. It's not got it. And even the GST dues from 2022 has not been cleared by the centre so far. Um, once the government changed, why is it that all opposition governments, particularly Congress government, but even Kerala, um, which is the left government, have to go to the Supreme Court to get the legitimate right of uh, their GST dues? That is the problem. The centre does selective politics, and even in my state of Maharashtra, where there is a BJP government, not only are we short charged on GST, our projects are taken and put elsewhere. That is the problem. The BJP is. Absolutely anti-federal structure, and the centre doesn't refuse uh, release the funds of the state governments that are governed by the opposition party. The thirteen thousand crore rupees is due as of yesterday. Why is that money not there in the state coffers? Nobody is answering that question. Let me uh, very quickly go back to the figures, viewers, because this is important. As I said, yeah. that since Mr. Sukku has come into power, and I yeah. put those figures out there. The overall debt, in absolute terms, for Himachal, has jumped by over 25.98 percent, almost 26 percent, quarter, in just the last one and a half years. Views. These are striking numbers. If you keep going at this rate, it'll reach that number: 96,568 crores by next year. Views. That's the, that's the number I and, gave you. And 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 there is no. There is no question of rolling back. Mr. Sukhu has quite made it clear, except that he's cutting corners here and there from those who are most marginalised. Now, let me bring in P. K. Basu. P. K. Basu, the blame again has been pinned straight onto the lapels, really, of Prime Minister Modi, as it always is. How do you respond to this? Well, I think first of all, it's uh, important to understand. That the old pension scheme that was reintroduced in Himachal Pradesh is ruinous, and the person saying this is Montek Singh Alawalia, uh, and Manmohan Singh has said it too. Reintroducing the old pension scheme is ruinous. Now, the in, the important aspect of this is that it is ruinous to the future of the state. It won't immediately ruin things, but it will ruin it over the long term. The next government will bear an enormous burden. Now. As you look at the current situation, the rapidity with which the debt of the state of Himachal Pradesh has increased is striking. A and B. In the last two years, the fiscal deficits have been far above what is permissible for the states. The RBI norm is that the, each state's fiscal deficit should not exceed three percent of gross state domestic product. In the case of Himachal Pradesh. That has been exceeded by a very large margin. Yeah. It's been four and a half, five, six percent of GDP. So it it is extremely uh, fiscally profligate. Now, uh, I think Tehsin Poonawala just claimed that the performance of the Manmohan Singh government, you know, his typical line that uh, Manmohan Singh government was very, very, very good, etc. Now, why did they get voted out? Let me just point out that Manmohan Singh inherited a current account surplus. For two and a half years under under Vajpayee, by the time he left, yeah. India was a fragile five economy with a with a with a current account deficit of of five percent of GDP in FY 2013. So, uh, this is not a stellar performance by any means, and in particular, there's something called the fiscal deficit. The national fiscal deficit uh, ballooned under Manmohan Singh as well, and the economy decelerated sharply. So let's not. Uh, get into this thing about going back to Manmohan versus uh, versus Vajpayee versus Modi. There is no doubt that the fastest five years of any uh, real GDP growth and real per capita GDP growth of any full prime ministerial term is the first prime ministerial term of Modi. 2014 to 2019, India grew faster. Than in any previous prime ministerial term. That is the simple. I cannot fact. believe now, you are allowing this, so, Rahul. But that is irrelevant. That 
Look, uh, that Tessin, is irrelevant. Uh, you know, you all, want to go back Tessin to Punawala, Nehru. We can go back to Nehru. The, the, the fact I'm sorry the, to say, yeah, the statistics uh, don't lie. Nehru, the fact, statistics are there. Nehru, now, I, I can't I would, understand. I would, I would like a right to the statistics. No, no, one right. second, now, one second. The point second, is that we second. now must focus on you Himachal. The fact that the whole pension scheme is being introduced in three states. No, no. On what basis are you saying? Were we not a fragile five economy? Weren't we declared as one? Yes or no? Okay. Yes or no, Tessin? Tessin Kunala, yes or no? No. No, we won't declare. We won't declare a fragile fight. Okay. Let me. Let me. Let me, let me, let me pull it out. First, we are here to discuss Himachal Pradesh. Let us get to Himachal Pradesh. Let us get to the states that have introduced the old pension. Let's give the lies out, and I'm not allowed to fact check. Listen. Listen. One second. One second. One second. Just a minute, Mr. Punawala. If you can fact check us on the Himachal story, it would be great. I don't have all the time. He went on the Manmohan Singh numbers, which are a lie. Well, because you brought them up, and he fact checked you. Now no, you want to cook up some more numbers. You don't even want to. You don't even want to. You don't even want to admit that the fragile five tag was also put. Now, hang on one second. Let me bring in Dr. Ranganathan. So let's open no, no, this I up. Would like, I would like. I would like to clarify one thing. You know, just Morgan like Stanley clarify. coined just, the please. term "fragile five to represent emerging market economies. And unfortunately, one of them was India. I mean, why are we running away? Why are we running away with this? Uh, running away from this? I mean, it's 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 a known fact, Dr. Ranganathan. Yeah, I mean, are we going to blame now? In a one versus three, you won't allow me to speak. But he's wrong on the old pension. You you, you want to take sure. this? You want to take this debate? He's I mean, wrong. Manmohan Singh's GDP growth was higher than Modi's by far. By far, Modi changed the GDP calculation figure okay. only to show a higher growth so, rate. So, viewers, there you go. The change, figure, change that you metrics. You know, we want to be stuck this in Nehru's a, metrics. This is it. This, okay. It was not Modi. It was T C A Anand. Yeah. T C A Anand is a well-known statistician. He is the one who changed the method of so calculation. So, compare old to old and new to new. Every country does it. So, the only way Tessin Punawala can say is by some old method of of calculating. He's fast consuming. Now, viewers, look. Let me just hold this up. This is NDTV, 2014, talking about India as one of the economies in the world's fragile five. This is the NDTV, which Compare the Congress Modi swears by the whole day. Day one and Modi one. And at least in that time, my friends, the NDTV channel was thought to be the gospel for the Congress party. And uh, this is all here. The recent turmoil in emerging markets has produced a new expression, the fragile five, and India is one of them. The new term, coined by little-known research analyst at Morgan Stanley last summer, identifies Turkey, Brazil, India, South Africa, and Indonesia as economies which have gone to become too dependent on skittish foreign investment to finance their growth ambitions. And Dr. Ranganathan, I mean, why are we dancing around this pole? The fact is that. Everyone told them, whether it was Montague Singh, Aluwalia, or even the great Dr. Manmohan Singh, don't do this, my friends. Don't go back to that OPS system. It's going to ruin the country. Uh, Rahul, before I come to the thrust of my thesis, I have to say this. Prasiddhi Jha, uh, uh, Dada, uh, Dr. Basu is a celebrated, reputed economist. Even if Tessin, my good friend, were to disagree with what he's saying, there is a method to say it. You cannot be rude and disrespectful to someone just because Prasiddhi Jha exposed and completely took Rahul Gandhi to the cleaners in Singapore. Doesn't mean that all the Congresses have suddenly become more of economists than he is. So, if he is wrong, you bring the facts on the table and out here, he's absolutely right. Now, let me come to the topic that we are discussing. Rahul, I speak as a layman because already Prasenji Jha is there as an economist here. The easiest promises to keep are the ones backed with certain debt. And to the politician, it doesn't matter who is found holding the can as long as you kick it down the road. I'm a supporter of the welfare state. We would wipe out tens, possibly hundreds of millions of Indians if we weren't a welfare state. But I'm of the opinion that welfare state is only possible through capitalism. The state cannot earn money through socialism and spend it on socialism, which is what is happening in this country for decades. And it is simply unsustainable. The second and more important point is, unless we draw a line between freebies and welfareism, 
we are staring down a bottomless abyss rahul and through which there is no escape but i think one can draw a line even though politicians don't want you to to me welfareism is where a state gives free health education tap water toilets gas cylinders vaccines housing freebie is one where the state gives away in cash or kind for the purposes of either appeasement or for such acts that go against national interest every party is indulging in it sadly farm law repeals msp government ads pre pilgrimages and ops the states have now a collective debt of 75 lakh crores rahul who will pay this we aren't america we can't keep on printing money america is in a debt of 35 trillion dollars we won't be spared rahul himachal is a textbook case and i'm glad you mentioned it let me explain please give me a couple of minutes very important in the early years of the upa <clears throat> prime minister manmohan singh and his <coughs> economic advisor dr montek singh alwalia both economists of high repute concluded that india can no longer afford the current pension system or it will go bankrupt as a result they jumped it and implemented a new pension scheme called the nps or national pension scheme the nps replaced the ops under the ops the state gave the entire pension 50% of the last drawn salary while under the nps the state contributed 14% while the employee contributed 10% besides pension under the ops was not taxed in 2022 another economist of very high repute rahul gandhi promised the people of himachal that if the congress is voted to power it will jump the nps the pension system that the congress itself had implemented and revert to the ops despite montek singh aluwalia publicly warning on record that the states that reintroduce the ops will go bankrupt ops is the biggest ravdi quote and quote the congress won as himachal has 1.6 lakh government employees and 1.3 lakh pensioners and as a result himachal is on its way to bankruptcy if already it isn't according to the rbi reverting to the ops is costing the state five times more than it had continued with nps himachal's tax revenue in 2023 24 was 13000 crores it has budgeted 10000 crores on pensions for 2024 25 yeah 77% of himachal's tax revenue is going to be spent on pensions Himachal debt meanwhile is soared to 94,992 crores, double of what it was six years ago. Himachal's debt to GDP is already 44 percent. It will rise soon to that of Punjab that has reverted to the OPS under the AAP and whose debt to GDP is 53 percent. States are cumulatively spending close to five lakh crores every year just on pensions. Reverting to the OPS will ruin the states. Generations to come would suffer. But does that matter to the current generation of politicians? I ask you all just 30 seconds. I don't blame the politicians. I never have. I never do. They are hypocrites. But when the Supreme Court can come in and deliberate on the farm reforms and laws, stay them. Why is it silent on the dreaded old pension scheme? Something that both the Congress and the BJP governments of yesterday's years had not only proposed to get rid of, but actually managed to get rid of. Just thirty seconds. The pension expenditure Rahul has risen from two percent of revenue receipts in 1980 to 22 percent now. How on earth are we allowing this beggar's belief? The sad fact is. that we are cursed with electing either louts or luddites right now the himachal cm is just asking his mlas to forsake two months salary it's going to be a year salary very soon yeah well let me tell you dr ranganathan he might end up giving you a pension also uh <laughs> for uh, the the valuable insights that you have given uh hopefully he'll listen to you but look i just want to quickly before i bring in guru paswan i just want to quickly put some facts on the table i'm going to take you back viewers to an article that appeared in a magazine called the india today january 14 2023 and it began by saying himachal pradesh government employees dance to joy on friday dance to joy and there are shots of them dancing away when cm sukhwinder singh sukhu announced the restoration of the old pension scheme The plan is slated to benefit around 1.36 lakh employees who were contributing their share to the national pension scheme. Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Punjab are other states where the OPS has been rolled out by the state governments of their government employees. Chhattisgarh and Rajasthan have both been led by the Congress. Now, very importantly, the Himachal CM during his recent Dharamsala visit claimed that budgetary provisions had already been made to restore the OPS. which was discounted this continued rather by the then veer bhadra singh government on april 1 2004 underline these words he claimed that budgetary provisions had already been made he goes on to say 
affordability of OBS expenditure will be achieved through financial discipline and cutting down expenses. So how is it that we are here now? If he had made these budgetary provisions, how is it that we are here now? Tehseen Punala, mull that question in your head, come up with an Maybe answer, I'll quickly go to... No, no, he said it himself, that we would be able to afford it. And those dancing, and those dance... I will, I will, let me bring in Guru Prakash Paswan, you mull the question. He's given lie numbers on national TV. One second, don't, 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 don't say all of that. Tehseen, in Fragile 5, the economy was there. Why would, why would those numbers be in... In any case, why are we because bothered about Manmohan Singh? Manmohan Singh told you not to go into OPS. Forget it. Yes, okay. PK Basu lied. <laughs> Let's go ahead. Forget he it. Lied Fine. About numbers. It doesn't matter. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Manmohan why Singh is not matter? the you chief minister. Sure One second. Numbers. Manmohan Singh came and went 10 years ago. It's I over. I do not lie. One I second. do not it's lie. I don't think I can get... I can let any analyst... Appear on national Eight TV and accuse me of lying. Exactly. He is the one lying. Absolutely. I assure you. But let's not take the bait tonight. But let's not take the bait tonight. But Mr. Basu, do not take the bait tonight. This is we are here. This is an attempt. Talk about one second. One second. This is an attempt. This is an attempt. One second. One second. One second. I just want to come here. Come back into this debate, please. Let's not get sidetracked. One, one second, one second. One second. Let's not. From where okay, Mr. Basu, Mr. Punawala, I need you guys to calm down for 30 seconds because we are not going to take this bait. We are going to stick to the subject. My question is this to Tehseen Punawala, and I will come yes. back to him after Mr. Paswan has spoken. The question is if Mr. Suku assured us all, and I'm quoting him. Affordability of OPS expenditure will be achieved through financial discipline and cutting down expenses and that budgetary provisions have already been made to restore the OPS. Then how are we at this place? How is it that those dancing employees are today crying? Now, Mr. Paswan, I want to ask you, the Congress constantly says you've no, choked Rahul. them. You choked them in Karnataka, you choked them in Himachal. I want you to respond to that. No, no, Rahul, I think uh, our dear friend Tehseen, uh, his passion tonight is something which is very interesting. But I'm sure you are aware of the fact that Tehseen has a personal interest and personal investment in Himachal Pradesh, where he likes to spend uh, the summers in Delhi. So I think we are all very well aware of the fact. But the point is this. When my friend Tehseen Poonawala talks about attack on the federal structure, I think this is beyond my comprehension. Let me cite you an example, a social impact example. There are employees of Rogi Kalyan Samiti. There are staff of Indira Gandhi Medical College and Hospital who have gone on an indefinite strike. There is no essential health services available for the citizens of Himachal Pradesh. Where will they go? Where will they go for the primary health center? If there is an emergency tomorrow, there is absolutely no option, no alternative available for the citizens of Himachal Pradesh. This is the model of the Congress government. This is the Rahul Gandhi model. This is beyond my comprehension. Come to the second point. Mr. Rahul Gandhi will go across the country. SC, ST, OBC, SC, ST, OBC. And you have very rightly pointed out, Rahul, that this problem, this financial crisis has negatively and disproportionately impacted the SC, ST and the marginalized communities of Himachal Pradesh. Look at the scholarship. It has went down. Look at the social sector expenditure. It has went down. Look at the infrastructure investment. It has went down. Look at the job creation and the job losses. It has gone up among the SC, ST and the marginalized communities. The second example, Rahul, which we have to understand Pensioners are completely dependent and are completely reliant on their pensions. When the pension is not coming, there are more than 1.5 lakh pensioners, Rahul. Let us just process that. 1.5 lakh pensioners dependent on that money for their essential medicine, for their food, for their rent, for their electricity. There is a human angle to this crisis which my friend Tehseen must understand and appreciate. It is not about Fragile 5. It is not about the top 5. It is about the human angle. It is about the essential health services. It is about the SC, ST and the marginalized communities. It is about our senior citizens facing the wrath of this financial crisis. Who is accountable? Who is accountable? There has to be some answerability. Modi is always as usual accountable. accountability. Ra Rahul. Can I, can I... Promise koi kare. Modi has to give the answers. Now, Mr. Tehseen Punawala, let me come back to you. One second, Mr. Basu, one second. No, no, I can... 
One second, Dr. Ranganathan is also showing things. One second. Uh, one second. Dr. Ranganathan, you're back to flashing. You're flashing me once again, please. Give me 30 seconds. I want to bring in uh, Mr. Punawala. One second, one second. We'll catch, we'll, 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 we'll come to you. I'll just come to you. Give me 30 seconds, please, to borrow your phrase. Now, Mr. Tehsin Punawala, I didn't make that promise. It was Sukku who made the promise to say that, look, budgetary allocations have been made and we are going to be very responsible. Now, one yeah. and a half years later, why are you crying? Why are you at right, this Rahul. space and this spot? Just answer this. Perfect. So let me just answer this. Do I want your viewers to know the average growth rate from Manmohan Singh was 8.2 <laughs> was 6.4 for Modi, 10 years. Now let's come to this. Okay. The okay. problem in Himachal, Again, which nonsense. nobody's answering, I mean, nobody, nobody, please pass what you are consuming. Uh, uh, the point is, no, no, no. no, no, no. no. You, you make it personal, I'll make it personal. Don't make it personal with me. Nonsense and all. Don't do this language with me on national TV. Be very okay, clear I about think it, today Mr. Uh, yeah, Mr. Punawala doesn't have much of an answer. I'm only asking you, did did Mr. Sukhu... Let's talk about one second. Why are you going on to talk about the old pension scheme? I would like to talk about the old pension scheme, please, if he doesn't interrupt me. Look, the problem in Himachal and nobody's addressing the elephant in the room is very clearly the 13,000 crores due from the union government. A, B. The old pension scheme is not the reason for any crisis anywhere because, simply because, the old pension scheme, before 2003 was the old pension scheme, <laughs> My God. those employees after 2003 who have taken the old pension scheme will only get their payment in 2020, uh, 10 years from now, 2033. None of them are getting the provisional payment was 300 crores, which was budget for. So it is not about the old pension scheme. Viewers, How much is it after Viewers, 10? viewers, 1, viewers, crores, viewers, 1, viewers, crores, viewers. But, but, viewers, viewers. Come on, Rahul, this viewers. is so unfair. When you're I'm not answering my question. This is, I Please answer my question. Let him speak. Let him speak. Let, let him explain. Let, let him, let him again, explain the contorted logic. Let him. Let him. This is past what you're consuming. Now look, the old pension scheme will only mature after 10 years. The old look. You're, none of you are letting me talk. Is this some effort? The old pension scheme will only mature after 10 years. Before 2003, everybody was on the old pension scheme. Between 2003 and now, those who retired a total budgetary provision is 300 crores already done by Sukhu. Ten years from now, when the first lot comes out in the old pension scheme that has now come in, which is now they've reverted to the old pension scheme, is 1,000 crores. But what the centre owes the state is 2,000 crores on the PF and other Viewers. funds. I've run out of time. I've run out of time. And Tessin Punawala hasn't answered that question. Yes, Dr. Rangarathan, you're showing me something. Yes, yes. he doesn't so answer. I object, to, I object to such rude language, very unbecoming of my good friend Tessin, using against no, a celebrated and reputed economist. Now, Tessin, please don't interrupt me. And I don't, but he said nonsense. Tessin, now who is interrupting? Now, who is interrupting? I Please apologize. Don't. I apologize. I apologize. When, when Prasenjit Das said India was a fragile five economy, Tessin said it is because of the first GDP that when Modi government came in, they made India fragile, fragile five before 2014. This is a headline from Financial Times. This is no friend of Modi. In fact, it's called Modi all sorts of names. And here, the whole article is about India being a fragile five. And this is March 2014. Before even Modi came. Yes. So and Tessin is exposing you live on television. No, it's okay. Done. But why are we going back to the past? My only point is, viewers, look. Mr. Sukku knew the state of affairs in Himachal when he inherited the treasury. He said, OPS is going to be something that I can fulfill because there is a budgetary allocation. It's a pension scheme. Salaries also I'll be able to spend, even though the spend has now increased to about 46% of the entire budget. But I'll be able to manage it. And with a little bit of discipline, I'll be able to make these commitments. And guess what, viewers? The employees of the government were dancing. And a large number of them voted for the Congress. Today, viewers, they're all running to grab their handkerchiefs because they don't know whether they should cry or not. The fundamental point is yours. If a chief minister says, I can do it, when Manmohan Singh, when Montek Singh, all of them said, don't do it. If he says, I can do it, then he has to walk the talk. Viewers, he's failed. And now he's finding scapegoats. And even if the government gave 13,000 crores tomorrow to blow up, it wouldn't make a difference.
because that will go to servicing the debt that is already accruing as we are speaking. Anyhow, viewers, a large number of you voted for the Congress party in these states. Ask yourself these questions, evaluate their performance, see if they're actually being good to what they said, if they've been able to balance the books or if they're going to start raising taxes in the next few months so that you can bail them out. Think about that, viewers. Think about how it all comes back to haunt. But I need to move on because Kangana